What is up, YouTubes? We're here to jump into Aquaria spoilers. I need to, well, I need to get a haircut. I need to get outside. I'm, I'm missing the sun, but we got to get caught up on what's happening in Aquaria. There's, there's a lot, but I want to start with the mechanics. I know we're a few days behind, but like, that's fine. Everything's fine. Cycling, it's like, you know, you pay the cost, you discard the card, you draw a card. But if it's a main mechanic in the set, there's obviously going to be some synergies with it. So we're just going to have to keep in mind what's going on. Like their example here, Granith Stinger, whenever you cycle another card, not this one, he's going to ping something for a damage. Makes sense. Or one damage to each opponent. Oh, this is a great 2 a Giant card. Note for the 2 a Giant pre-release guide. Now we know. Keyword counters. This I actually thought was pretty cool. I've always wondered, like, why can't one creature give another flying, like, a counter? I, I guess I'd, in my mind it wasn't quite counterfied. But this makes sense, right? Like, if you can just make something bigger by giving it a 1-1 counter, why can't you also give it flying or give it trample? Yeah, I think this will be fun. To me, this is, like, if I was playing Magic and just chilling, especially learning the game, why not just be able to say, yeah, here's a trample. Now, it's going to... It's probably going to get a little annoying having to keep track of the counters, like the 1-1 counters, because it's only 1-1 counters. It's really easy to keep track of it because, you know, you got dice laying around. You can use six-sided dice, whatever you need, good to go. These, you kind of have, you have to have pretty specific things to keep track of it. So, yeah, it's fun, but uh, what I'm bringing up is more of a minor annoyance than like a, oh, no, you shouldn't do this. I'm kind of, ex I'm excited to see how this feels, especially in regards to a pre-release. And then mutate. Here's like really the first completely new mechanic. Mutate took me a while to wrap my head around, but it it basically is you targeting any non-human creature. That other non-human creature doesn't have to be mutate horrific, <laughs> mutatable. You're basically just saying I target this creature that's already in play and make it bigger, faster, stronger, better, fancy new abilities, and it just grows that one thing. Now, we'll get into the, the ins and outs of it in the pre-release guide just so we're thoroughly okay with it. But to me, this is a pretty cool new mechanic. I'm excited for it. It feels fun. Like, to me, this is pushing magic back to the focus of just creature v. creature. mono e mono battle on the battlefield, not with, like, other things in magic. I don't know. But I'm excited for it to, to see how it feels and if it does feel like who can just build the biggest, baddest creature. Does it have some more flexibility? How creative did they get with something that feels pretty new, but also in a way brings magic back to its roots for me? And then the last mechanic to kind of jump into is companion here. And Karuga is the example they give. Companion puts a restriction on the deck you build and are playing with. So if you're using a card with companion, with the companion mechanic, when this says your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana cost three or greater and land cards, you cannot have a one or two drop in that deck, period, full stop. This card starts in your sideboard. You can basically play it as though it's in your hand though at any time, that first time, not at any time, sorry, timing rules still apply, but you can cast it once from outside the game and then it's just like now it's your 41st card in your limited deck or whatever you're playing with it. There's been a lot of contention around this hey we're just creating essentially a new zone and putting a card in it and giving you a mechanic that brings a card into the game that wasn't there before do i like it my gut reaction to it's no because the idea of who is it mark rosewater always throw or is quoted as saying restrictions breed creativity i would probably phrase it as more restrictions force creativity breed is probably a, a better spin on it but i mean Regardless, you have to be creative when they're saying, here's the lines you have to stay within, find a way to make it exciting. This just says, ignore any restrictions. We've just come up with a new zone. Like that's not restricting. That's literally just making up your own rules. That's reinventing the wheel. Anyway, there's our mechanics. These are the cards that are in the set. There's another spoiler list for commander cards, which I'll probably touch on just quickly at the end of this video and I'm not going to touch on every one of these cards I just want to touch on the highlights I think I've said the word touch too many times but the point is I just want to go through the cards that I'm the most excited about otters I think everyone's excited about otters I don't know how you couldn't be happy to see more otter cards that seems like a lot of fun also a lot of these being foreign means that I have to click into them and read through them but we'll, we'll get there that's not really for now for now we're just we're catching up on Akoria, the spoilers what's happening 
we see that there's a lot of alternate art cards and part, some of them I like some of them I like I just this art style I'm not a huge fan of it doesn't feel like a magic card to me but that being said it's always different when you have it in your hand and when you actually see it in person just to, to really judge it my gut reaction to it's just kind of meh I'm not like a huge fan of it not not a fan of it but it just feels oddly different to me seeing Sharknado referenced seven years after the movies were released is hilarious like this set definitely feels like there's some shenanigans going on the fact that we're mutating shark beasts with bird goats and then literally creating flying shark tokens sure the twitter sphere that's saying this feels like a silver bordered set with black borders yeah i, I get that to an extent you could see how wizards kind of went off the deep end a little bit with being creative in regards to the card creation here but i kind of like it again like crazy weird cards i just had that video about kavu which were these crazy massive beasts that were just getting after it this is kind of that but in a more it's in a more like what's the way like i don't want to say refined because it's like in a way it feels less refined but it feels it feels like the game has come into its own more right it feels like magic has found its boundaries it's found what it can do well what it knows it can do well and going outside those boundaries results in something as crazy as stuff like this horror infernal exactly and that's like you would think oh that's like the craziest creature type in the set nope bird goat so so far bird goats the top one for me these other art form art art form art type cards where they take essentially an ip from another thing and like put the actual name of the card in this subtext box beneath it is definitely different and i don't know if these are all necessarily from a different universe you know a, another ip but when you see godzilla cards my my gut reaction to that was hey huge creatures and magic make sense but i don't know why we're borrowing from another ip you know or, or borrowing the idea from another universe there's something that just feels awkward to me about that i'm not sure what it is i'm not trying to say i'm like huge fan of it woefully against it it just feels odd to me i'm just going to leave it at that i'm just going to linger at that that's my reaction this is my reactions to ecoria stuff it just feels awkward to me right now we'll leave it at that moving on though i'm the more i look at just how many awesome mutate creatures there are it has me really already starting to chew on what is my pre-release guide going to look like because there's a lot to take in here where it's not just hey here's the creatures you need to build we really need to have a good understanding of how strong this mutate mechanic is although the risk to reward isn't terrible like there's been those comparisons to bestow which bestow in some ways is better than mutate because if you're not aware if you have a creature on the board you go to mutate that creature if the creature you're targeting to mutate dies this still just comes in as a, its own creature it doesn't have the mutate then go off it's just a creature etb but when those creatures do mutate great they're there they're one permanent all that good stuff with just many abilities probably but when that creature dies they both die they both go to the graveyard as separate cards great have a good time or i guess they go to the graveyard as one creature but now they're in the graveyard once that resolves two different cards with bestow when you killed the creature that was bestowed whatever that bestow enchantment was then stuck around as its own creature so you kind of got that bonus value but those bestow creatures were generally weaker than these mutate creatures which are not weak i mean they're elemental bird three it's still like a three four flyer for five mana that's not terrible right that's and then if you mutate it later on it's still gonna okay it's still gonna do stuff for you there's just a lot to take in here and I, again like i'm i'm actually the more i look at the cards that are these non-human mutate crazy things the more i'm a fan of it i think that's that's probably my most honest gut reaction and then you see crazy cards like this Dranith magistrate this is like white prison type deck building it's going to be great in standard i assume it's going to really shut down mono red and it having three toughness like that's not a mistake this thing is not meant to be shocked to death it has to be either two for one yourself to get it off the board or whatever this is going to cause mono red some problems we'll see how well brewers and whatnot can deal with it or if ikoria also comes with a, an answer to a white creature like that mythos of nethrioi 
Nethroy, something like that. It's artwork by Seb McKinnon, kind of hard to miss because he has such an iconic style and magic, but it's probably the worst worded card we've had spoiled so far. Basically just read it as like two bullet points. Do either or. Destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature, or if you also used white and green, destroy target non-land permanent. That's the way to read it. If you try and read it as one sentence, your brain is going to just twist itself more than brains are already twisted. You're going to have a heck of a time trying to figure out what it's saying. But it's basically, if you only use black mana or not all three colors, you're destroying target non-land creature. If you use all three colors, you're destroying target non-land permanent. Have a good day. Okay, moving on. What was next to talk about? Yeah, these are, yeah, doesn't this, like, I don't know. You tell me, do you like this kind of artwork? this feel of it or not. It just feels like it weird to me, right? Am I crazy for saying that? All right, I digress. There was one more thing. Oh, I really like these crystals. I think in limited, they're gonna be phenomenal. And I think they're gonna have that shot in commander decks, at least casual commander decks. Because having mana rocks that you can cycle later on in the game isn't terrible, right? Like that's not the worst thing you could do with the mana rock is just cycle it and get that card that actually does something more powerful and exciting. We got all kinds of more Godzillas going on. Death Corona. I read an article that Wizards is trying to like remove or not print any more of these because, I mean, coronavirus, obviously. But like, why? Why would you make the most, one of the most collectible cards from the set and most remembered cards from the set be the thing you're trying to distract attention from? Wouldn't that make sense to just not say you're going to take some percentage of whatever proceeds you're going to generate from this card and donate it to coronavirus relief efforts. Great. Do that. Great. Okay. Let's just move on. Baby Godzilla is probably the cutest card. It definitely reminds me of, oh, and now I can't remember it. It was a cartoon where it was the dinosaur family. Oh my goodness. Some of y'all, one of you can tell me in the comments, but you know what I mean? This 100% looks like one of those characters. And he's adorable. Can't can't help it. Can't help it. There's gonna be some great commander cards coming out of this thing as well. Ikoria seems to have a phenom like it almost gives me Dominaria vibes in that sense of look at all of these super unique, just crazy creatures that you can use as commanders, like an elemental dinosaur cat. Need I say more? Okay, let's just jump real quick to the commander. Uh, previews as well because there's a couple in here that are interesting like we're getting some pretty cool reprints some awesome planeswalkers the locust god is getting reprinted and then i saw this this is probably the card i want to call it more than any fluctuator i think it was from urza saga originally i don't have any i was like oh that's cool didn't that have to do with cycling and then this was like a huge spec where people bought it up when they found out that cycling was going to be a thing in the new commander decks and then little did you know they were just going to reprint it so in a way, I love this. Like, I love the idea that these people that had inside info or tried to jump on this and, like, scalp the prices. Be you know, because they're not going to use the cards for what the cards are meant to be used. They just want to try and profit a little bit. And then Wizards said, don't worry. Don't worry, folks. We got you covered. Good move by Wizards to make sure that all is well. And the fact that they're also now printing Soul Ring. And I assume they're going to be printing Soul Ring and Arcane Signet. It's down here somewhere in every Commander Precon. Nahiri being reprinted, I'm kind of happy to see. Just in the sense of this was, I think, the first Mythic I pulled when I got back into Magic. I had bought, we started playing at Ixalan, but I just bought a box of Shadows over Innistrad for God knows what reason. And that was the Planeswalker I pulled. Super excited to see her coming in and having some more utility based on her being in one of these new decks. This is just, there's just so much happening in this Commander stuff. And I think my last reaction is, it feels weird having... Five commander precons being spoiled the same time as a standard set. And I, I'm 100% on board with Wizards saying we don't understand why we haven't grouped the release of a set with commander decks so that we can include some new cards in those decks. And it feels like there's some more, it gives us more visibility into the world, it gives it flushes everything out a bit more. That all makes sense. That all makes total sense. I just think putting the spoilers on top of each other like this is a bit confusing because when you're going through the cards and you say wow this is a sweet card can't wait to draft this never mind it's a commander card or vice versa this is gonna be sweet in a commander deck nope that's in the booster boxes 
there's it just it feels a little weird like it feels like you could have done one and then the other you could have released the set and then that week of the pre-release that's when you release the commander stuff the, the commander pre contract. i don't know i'm just throwing ideas out there but all in all i really do like the idea of having the commander sets have their own unique cards that are related to the new world that we're currently on and glade muse my friend total mtg congrats on getting this as a preview card this was his card. This is a crazy card that I imagine is going to be a staple in just about every green deck. Whenever a player casts a spell, if it's not their turn, that player draws a card. And yeah, I think I think Ikoria has a lot to be excited about from these commander precons and especially from this new set and all the crazy creatures and stuff we got going on. I really do hope that my my reaction to this set getting us back to what I feel is just that ever lovable thing about magic where it's just crazy creatures fighting other crazy creatures and you're doing fun and exciting things with them this set feels like it's hitting that on the head i'm really hoping that's the deal and it, it proves to be the limited environment that i'm hoping it is but anyway we'll be back with some more videos thank you so much for watching we'll see you in the next video take it easy peace